Thanks for tuning back in to In the Studio here at Davis Media Access in Davis, California. This is a show where we highlight local newsmakers and organizations, topics of interest. We also use it as a hands-on learning lab for uh, our many community volunteers. So a shout out to the volunteers crewing today under the direction of studio manager Diane Dadashka. Today we're talking about Healthcare for All California, which is an organization based in Novato that works on single to advocate for single payer health care in California. We all know that health care nationally has been nothing but a hot button issue, but in California we sometimes do things a little bit differently. With me today are Davis residents Dan and Millie Bronstein. Dan is the state chapter uh, chair of Healthcare for All California, and uh, Millie is the Yolo County chapter coordinator or chair. So welcome to you both. And mm -hmm. Thanks so much for coming in. This interview came about because I've been on your email list uh, for, for a while and I know um, there was a bill, I think it was a Senate bill, bill 562 that you were, you were doing a lot of work on uh, um, mm -hmm. for a while. So let's, let's get to that in a minute. Let's start with what the organization does and um, what, the, what the bulk of your work has been. I believe you said you've been the chair of the, the statewide for three years. Yes, this mm -hmm. is my third year that I'm completing as statewide chair. And uh, we have nearly a thousand members uh, from uh, Humboldt County in the north all the way down to San Diego County in the south. And we're divided into uh, 18 chapters. And our goal, uh, it's in our bylaws, is to achieve a quality healthcare system for all residents of the state of California using a single payer financing system. Let's talk about that a little bit for not everyone may know what single payer means and how it is financed. So can you explain? Absolutely. And this is central to the concept. Rather than having many different insurance, private insurance companies, right. all of whom want to achieve large profits and uh, have substantial administrative costs. We will have one uh, agency uh, that will pay everyone's health care bills. Uh, that's the single payer. Right. And this agency could be a special fund uh, outside the budget, the formal budget of the state of California, which would be uh, set up to pay people's bills. So not dissimilar to how things are done in the UK, for example. Centralized. Uh, actually, uh, Autumn, uh, I'm going to uh, smile and object. That's okay. UK is very different. I'm here to learn too. Yes. Uh, the, the good example will be our next door neighbor, Canada. Okay. Canada has had a single payer system for quite a while. And uh, the system is really quite simple. Uh, everybody pays a certain small tax to their provincial government in Canada. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm and each province has a fund which then pays everyone's health care bills. Okay. See, health care is a very confusing issue, and so this is why we wanted to have you in today. So 18 chapters, and YOLO has, mm -hmm. I'm guessing, probably a pretty active chapter. Fairly, yes. Yeah. We have uh, about 50 members, and, you know, it, it ebbs and flows, you know, with um, in terms of people paying their dues. Right. In terms of supporters and people who are on our, our mailing list, you know, I think we've got about four, more than 400 or right. so up there and throughout the year. So area. how does the work of, say, the policy directives from the statewide level, how does that uh, trickle down and manifest at the, at the county level chapter? Well, we, we are focusing on education and advocacy. So we're really trying to do outreach to the community mm -hmm. in, um, you know, whatever form we can. So there's tabling at the markets on, at times or some other areas. Uh, there's uh, giving um, a house party where you might have a small group of people and we'll be talking about the um, various uh, sure. things or actually doing presentations at organizations and from churches to service clubs and, and faith groups uh, and uh, showing of films and having panels. So there's a variety of ways of getting the information out. But then also um, informing our legislators, you know, uh, mm -hmm. what the needs are what their constituents are concerned about and why we believe that uh, the single-payer system is the way to go. Right. 
And I, and I opened with, we do things a little bit different here in California. I know there's been some back and forth. You mentioned a column in The Bee this morning written by Dan Walters that talks about this very issue. What's the gist of what's happened in California and where we might be going? That's a big question, I realize. Yes, well, let's start by saying that about uh, a little over a year ago, uh, actually in May of uh, 2017, mm -hmm. the California State Senate passed a bill setting up a policy that the state would work toward a single-payer system. That was 562, I mentioned. Yes, mm -hmm. right. And of course, then, since the Senate was the House of Origin, it went over to the Assembly. Right. And upon arrival in the Assembly, Speaker Rendon tabled it in the Rules Committee. When it's tabled in the Rules Committee, there's no action possible. Right, right. So it's been sitting there in that committee for over a year now mm -hmm. without action. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead, Millie. And I'm just going to say there's um, been a long history in California of activities uh, around single payers starting back in the uh, 90s mm -hmm. when uh, the grassroots movement was formed and then uh, HCA was uh, you know, became an organization, right. and we do have, you know, throughout the state. So we've had two previous single-payer bills that were actually passed in uh, 2006 and 2008 that were vetoed by Governor Schwarzenegger. Mm -hmm. Now, Walters referenced the fact that he, he said health care for all in California is kind of a, 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 a foregone conclusion. What do you mean by that? Well, I think <laughs> just about every politician, including all the ones that are running this fall, uh, and are uh, the ones who are in the top two, right. say we must have a universal health care system. But the real question is, how is it going to be financed, and how is it going to be administered? Yeah. And that's where we get into a lot of controversy. I, my impression is that there's been a little bit of a cart before the horse kind of, well, let's pass it because it's a buzzword because everyone's talking about it, then without getting down into the nitty gritty of how do you finance something like that? And how do you manage something like that too? Well, let's take those two questions separately. Okay. Financing and management. For one thing, uh, a distinguished professor at uh, UC, mm -hmm. now uh, he was uh, moving to uh, the University of Massachusetts, uh, where he heads a special uh, organization that uh, looks at healthcare fin financing. Mm -hmm. Name is Robert Pollan. Uh, he did a study uh, more than a year ago now showing that we can finance a single payer system with a relatively small and carefully constructed sales tax, which would uh, eliminate the taxes on food. We don't pay sales tax on food. Right. And would have a uh, uh, floor where the low-income people would not have to pay it. But with that tax level, it would be about two and three-quarter percent. We could finance all the health care uh, that Californians need uh, and that means uh, everyone from uh, infants to uh, seniors. Okay. And do it for 40, and I'm going to use the word carefully, billion with a B, less than the state of California now pays. Walters in his column today mentions 400 billion. Uh, Professor Pollan and his research crews felt we could do it for 360 billion. Wow. So it would essentially replace what exists now as Medi-Cal and, and, and other programs and become one big umbrella. And Onam, what's very important, and every listener should know this, it would replace all health care premiums, mm -hmm. all deductibles. For example, some people have insurance that requires a four or $5,000 deductible, right. which they often have difficulty paying. It replaces co-pays. Mm -hmm. uh, all the ways we typically spend money out of pocket would be replaced by this uh, simple sales tax. Yeah, my oh. family pays, pays close to $1,000 out of pocket sure. to cover a self-employed person and sure. a couple of kids. Right. You know? Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and part of the, uh, it's almost like a smoke screen that, uh, what's in the media because 
this has been an issue that has been extensively studied and we certainly have the healthcare policy people and the economists that are capable of figuring out. There's a lot of technicalities in being able to uh, work with the federal government to implement the financing of it. But um, what the tabling of 562 does is takes the public debate away yeah. where you cannot work on a bill and a actually hash out the details of it. Yeah. Yeah. Furthermore, I'm going to add that in today's column, Walters mentions the potential of a, of a new bill which uh, it was added to the state budget process just a few weeks ago. And it's an assembly bill? Yes. Uh, it's yeah. an assembly bill yeah. that would create a new commission that would take three or four years to report on the kind of system we need. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, we have a terribly inhumane system right yeah. now. Not only do patients uh, abhor it, but uh, any prof healthcare professional also uh, finds it r completely... Uh, uh, unconstructive, uh, not helpful. Sure, I think they would really like to spend more than five minutes with each patient, you right. know, and not sure. be staring at a computer right. the whole time. No, and yeah. not having to get permission from the insurance company to right. send somebody mm -hmm. to a specialist right. or, or, or run, know, a, mm -hmm. run a Whatever. test or right. anything like mm -hmm. that, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So, back to the. Thank you for circling back to the bill that had mm -hmm. been SB 562 that had been tabled, because where do you go from here as advocates? What What are your next steps going to be? Well, I, th I think this goes back to our education and our advocacy. And um, we certainly got a real boost when, um, during the presidential race, uh, race when mm -hmm. Sanders kept bringing it up. Right. Because over the 20 some odd years that California has been working on it, the media does not cover mm -hmm. any of the um, advocacy actions. Right. And so that, um, we are getting more public than uh, knowledgeable and getting out there. And what's really holding up is the um, political will. And the only way to change political will is for the constituents to then let their legislators know right. that this is what's going on with me and this is why we need it. And we need it earlier than later because it took a good four years to even get the Affordable Care Act implemented right. in California. Right. So if we were to have passed 562 this year, we're still looking at time to put that in. And so there's a sense of urgency. So to try, I'm, I'm really pleased that um, you're having this conversation so mm -hmm. that people can really start thinking about, yes, I can right. be part of this movement because right. I need to have my voice included. There's nothing more powerful than people telling their own stories. This is something right. I say often here right. in the context of community media. Mm -hmm. right. People telling their own stories is incredibly yes. powerful. So sharing them with the legislator, yes. uh, how difficult their path has been, how hard it's been to get coverage, how expensive it is, yes. and all the hardships. And to that, I'll also add what we need on every level right now is people need to register, they need to vote, yes. then they need to continue to do that follow through with their legislators. Right. We're running out of time. We're yes. going to have okay. you back again, though. We're going to keep following up on this and so oh, we can you. kind of keep it in front of uh, the Davis community. Mm -hmm. I want to mention your website, um, healthcareforall.org, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of information there that you can find out about services, you can find out about how to get involved, and you can find out about educational events. The second thing is I want to invite you to keep sending me notices of okay. um, your educational events so that I can promote them through DMA's channels. And then, Millie, you also mentioned an email you wanted to share. Yes, for the local email, you can go hcayolo okay. um, at comcast.net. Okay, and that will route to you, hcayolo yes. at comcast.net or healthcareforall.org. Um, I want to thank you for the, you two really represent for me a very uh, quiet but persistent advocacy. You've never, as long as I've known you, You've, you've worked on what you believe in, you don't mm -hmm. give up, and you're continuing to, to do this work um, in your retirement. Thank you very much for that. And please come back and, and fill us in a couple months down the road.
We look forward to it. Thank you. We look forward to that. Thanks so much. And thank you for tuning in to In the Studio here in Davis Media Access. We air this on DCTV, uh, Channel 15, Comcast in Davis, but we also put it online, promote it on social media. There are lots of ways to find our our info, and you can find our full archive at dctv.davismedia.org. I'm Autumn Labbe-Renault, and thanks so much for tuning in.